Gareth Southgate actually stepped down as England manager, which I was surprised by. I'm not going to lie. I thought he was going to hang on um, until the very bitter end. And I also thought the FA may, may decide to give him a new contract because of all the good vibes about the final. It's possible. I know it sounds crazy, but it's entirely possible the FA would have done that. And I, and I could have seen a scenario where Gareth Southgate would have tried to stay for one more type of cycle. It didn't happen. So thank God he stepped down because I think despite all the good he's done for England, especially when it comes to reaching finals and semifinals and shit, and obviously the main thing that I think he should receive a lot of credit for is the atmosphere and the vibe around the England team. I think he's definitely improved the good vibes in there. Um, I don't think he's helped with the overall narrative in the media. You know, the media are always going to be a bit doom and gloom when it comes to England. But I think in terms of the sentiment of the players, from all accounts, they all seem to be happy to go and play for England. They don't feel the uh, intense scrutiny as much as they probably did. There's not a lot of negative feelings. Players aren't in different camps. He's definitely provided a sense of unity for England. Cool. Great work. Hand the baton over. I personally, I'm not that bothered about who the next manager is. I'm not going to lie. I don't care if the person's British. I don't care if the person's foreigner. I don't give a fuck. I think the most important thing going forward is England needs an identity change. Because I think that final against Spain, for some England fans, I'm sure they exist out there. I think there are some England fans who are super delusional and who think if we had Pep Guardiola managing us, that we would have beat Spain. I think that's what they think. When the reality is, Spain are just a better team than us. Spain are just a better country than us at football. Yes, we have a more entertaining league. Yes, our league generates more money. But I think in terms of pure footballing ability, Spain proved in that final that they're better than us. Because I think watching that game, if England England had to have played at 95% of their potential, 900% of their potential to win that game. Whereas I feel like Spain played at 70% of their potential and still won the game despite us equalizing. That was a really concerning part for me. I don't even think they played that well as a team, personally. I felt they kept control of the game, don't get me wrong, but I don't think they were as frightening as they were in the group stages or the knockout phases. But we obviously made mistakes and they punished us like great teams do, clinical. And you also have to remember that particular final against Spain, Spain were without Gavi and Pedri, two of their young star midfielders who would have probably been starting for them if they, if they didn't get injured. Gavi and Pedri are both injured and they ended up having the man or their to- player of the tournament ended up being a defensive midfielder who was Rodri and in the final Rodri got injured in the first half and loads of England fans on social and in the stadium were cheering when he got substituted at the half time thinking that oh now the game is swung in our favour then they bring on a player who plays who we didn't I'd never heard of Zubedini I think his name is um, he plays for Real Sociedad I don't watch La Liga and he legitimately was like a carbon copy of Rodri <laughs> he didn't miss a beat and just they just continued purring on um, you know like clearly they were the better team clearly they were we hung around we competed okay but I don't think a manager would have changed that result I just think they're better as a football but I think going forward what we need is an identity change and I would like to see whoever the manager is promote a style of football that's reflective of the Premier League so I don't want none of that possession based stuff we can't do it Spain play that way because that's how they play from kids, from the youth academies all the way to the first team. They play that possession, tiki-taka, base football. And now, because they've got fucking Yamal and what's his name on the... Uh, Lamin Yamal on the, on, the, on the wings and the other kid, they've now got that explosiveness and that creativity and that spontaneity on the wings. But that possession-based football, the great passing in the midfield, that's something that we always know our Spanish teams to do. But we can't do that. That's something that we, we have to change at the fundamental level of how we teach kids how to play football from all the youth ranks and stuff. Cool. So what we should do, I think, is have our England team be reflective of the Premier League. So I want to see heavy metal football. I want to see fast attacking football, like almost like FA Cup style when a Premier League team goes to like a non-league tide and the ball's just flying all over the place. That's how England should be pre- playing on the front foot front foot pressing going for the jugular it's going to be a bit brutal we might lose some games but they will always be entertaining that's how it should be and a lot of those players will respond well to that sort of play I also want to see going forward a more of a focus on picking players based on what they do on the season not what base they do on the previous tournaments 
one of the things you criticize Gareth Southgate about is that he was incredibly loyal to players who did well for him in previous tournaments. Now, the issue is in between tournaments, there's seasons. And in seasons, people go up and they go down. But national teams should be picked based on what you've done for me lately, not what you've done in a previous tournament last year. Because if that's the case, then in this tournament that just gone when just gone by in the Euros, Luke Shaw would have never been picked. Luke Shaw got picked only because he played pr well previously in the World Cup for England, and he was trusted. Whereas I think Gareth Southgate should have always picked players based on what they did in the season. I also think if you pick players based on that, you also need to stop with picking players to start based on their brand name. And you have to pick players who complement the team. Now, that might mean you might pick a player who's less talented than the other, but if they are a better fit for the team and they provide better balance, then you pick that player. So, for instance, if that kid from Crystal Palace, the DM, I think it's Werver or McWerver, I forgot what his name is, and he's a DM and he's highly rated, if he is actually a better option to play as a defensive playmaker in that midfield instead of Declan Rice, you play that kid. Even though Declan Rice is possibly a future England captain and has got a good brand name and is a great player, if for England that Crystal Palace kid is a better fit, you play him. That should apply across the board. No one should be playing based on their brand name. Because if that happened, Harry Kane doesn't start. Because Harry Kane's starting because he's Harry Kane and he's the captain of the side. That he was clearly injured. He was clearly struggling for the entire tournament. He did hardly anything apart from scoring, I think, what, a penalty and maybe something else. But he was anonymous. You pick the players based on what they've done for you previously in previous tournaments and also make sure that you don't take players or tournaments who are injured, especially not a left back. That's not necessary. If you're going to pick like a starlet player, like a, you know, like a Jude Bellingham, for instance, who maybe is going to be the leader of the new team going forward and he's maybe someone you can't drop, fair enough. But like a left back, that should not be the, that should not be the name of the game. So I'd love to see that be the case. It probably isn't. Most likely everyone will be obsessing about us playing a certain brand of football we're not going to play. It'll go back to favourites and shit. But I honestly hope that a lot of England fans who watch that Euro final don't think that, we were we were we're, we're ever going to change that result with a good manager or with different formation it's not going to be the case we are probably a top five what nation maybe in europe maybe not the world but maybe in europe but we have a long way to go before we can beat these best teams in the tournaments and win european trophies especially with spain power in the way they are we're not going to beat them you know by trying to out football them we're going to beat them by like just doing the dark arts you know, playing like we're playing in the FA Cup, you know, knockout phase game and long balls, fast attacking play, loads of crosses into the box, you know, running off the of defenders, like really fast attacking Premier League brand of football would be a welcome change. And if anything, for the fans too, it'll give us something to look forward to when we watch England. Because England, especially under Gareth Southgate, was so boring to watch. Legitimately a ball fest. Send you to fucking sleep. So fucking risk averse. And we don't want that. When, when, when the Premier League starts, it's always very gung-ho, very front foot, and the national team should reflect that. So I'm glad that he did step down. Um, it gives space for the next person, but I hope whoever they pick decides to go a bit more gung-ho and not be so shy about taking off the handbrake. Hopefully, 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 that's what we hope for. Um, there's actually a post here courtesy of Sky Sports News that says the FA actually advertised the position so the FA has actually got a job posting online that you can check to see what the credentials are they're looking for for the next manager so this is courtesy of Sky Sports News it says the FA has formally advertised the England manager's vacancy on its website as the search for Gareth Southgate's successor continues English football governing body says it has already identified a number of candidates after Southgate announced his recognition on the July 16th the first bullet point in the job description specifies the need to win a major tournament which i don't think should be the main goal we haven't won a major tournament since 1966 it should be about a consistent run of good results or finish you know of going the furthest we can in tournaments i don't think it should be about winning a major one we're not in place to win one we're not going to beat these major teams like i think all the major i think all the teams that spain beat on the way to the final i think we probably would have lost to in the final i swear to god and spain also played within 70 percent of themselves i feel like but I think we would have lost to all the teams Spain beat on the way to the final, 100%. So I think we should be focusing on trying to be consistently in semi-finals, quarter-finals, maybe even the finals, and then building from that overall. 
He also says a successful candidate will have significant experience of English football with a strong track record of delivering results in the Premier League and or leading international competitions. Other job recommendations include being experienced in successfully identifying, managing and developing English qualified players and being highly resilient and comfortable in a very high profile job or role, sorry, with intense public scrutiny, which is very true. Um, the English job does, you know, come with a lot of scrutiny. I think most national teams jobs are like that. But, you know, English people have or my fellow English people have a lot of um, they receive a, they get a lot of joy out of uh, kicking people while they're down or tearing people down, even though they built them back up. It's crazy. It continues. The FA has set a deadline for August the 2nd for applications. England's next game is against Republic of Ireland in the Nations League on September 7th. So we'll probably hear soon what they're going to do. A lot of people are pining for, I think I saw some people d debating they want uh, Jurgen Klopp to be manager. I see some people seeing Eddie Howe. I see some people talking about Graham Potter, former Brighton manager. I personally don't give a fuck who the manager is. I think the methodology, the ideology and the plan behind us needs to change. Style of play, uh, um, selection processes, doing away with player power, doing away with pl brand players playing in certain places, and maybe approaches the game, maybe being more adventurous and taking more risk should be the way to go. So whoever can fulfill that, I'll be backing them. Whoever can fulfill that, I will definitely, definitely be backing them. <laughs>